Hi everyone, I've got a new set of exam question walkthroughs. So the topic I've decided to go for is an organic topic, fancy to change. So it's alkenes and addition polymers. As always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try them first. Okay, so we'll make a start. So you'll notice I've drawn up all four of these um, molecules. We've got to identify the non-polar one. So we're basically looking for a symmetrical molecule. I'll just quickly talk through each one just to explain how the name fits the structure. So A, it's the E form of 1,2-dichlorobutuene. So you can see the chlorines are on carbons 1 and 2. Um, the E means that the priority groups are on opposite sides of the carbon-carbon double bond. So the priority group here on this carbon is the chlorine, but on this one it's the CH3 group. So you can see they're diagonally opposite sides so this is the E form. Well, this is not symmetrical, so this um, will be a polar molecule. Moving on to B, we've got E23-dichlorobutuene. So now all we've done is switch the chlorines to position or carbon 2 and 3, but they need to be on opposite sides to make it the E isomer. And you can see, hopefully, that th this is symmetrical. So this is actually the answer. So this will be a non-polar molecule because the, there won't be an overall dipole on it. Might as well, for revision purposes, explain C and D in terms of their names and their structures. So we've now got Z isomers, Z23. So basically we want the chlorines, which are the priority groups on the C's of the double bond. They need to be on the same side of the double bond now. So you can see that this isn't symmetrical because you haven't got any symmetry that way. So the chlorines are skewed on one side, the ch 3 is on the other. So this will be polar. And D is Z14-dichlorobutuene. So we need the chlorines on carbons 1 and 4. And the priority groups need to be on the same side of the double bond. Well, the priority group on the left-hand carbon is this CH2Cl group. Likewise, this carbon. So they're both on the same side. That makes it Z. So obviously this one will be a polar molecule as well. So answer was B. Moving on to the next question, so how many sigma and pi bonds are in this hydrocarbon? So you'll notice I've already identified the sigma and the pi bonds. The important thing to know is that in a CC double bond you've got a sigma and a pi bond. So there's a total of two pi bonds in the molecule which obviously rules out option A and C. And then all the single bonds, these are all sigma bonds but remember you've also got sigma bond uh, as part of the double bond. So it was 12 sigma and 2 pi, so the answer was D. Moving away from multiple choice questions now, so sort of regular questions. So we've got compound B, it's a member of a homologous series. What's the name and the general formula? So obviously that's the alkene homologous series with the general formula CNH2N. Next part, reagents and conditions need to convert B into a saturated hydrocarbon. So basically we want to turn this CC double bond into a CC single bond. So we're going to react it with hydrogen. So that's your reagent. Your conditions are you need a nickel catalyst. You also need a temperature of about 150 degrees, but that's not often required in the masking. But I'm going to put it down anyway. Moving on to the next question. So one difference between sigma bond and pi bond. Well, a sigma bond is formed from the direct or the end-to-end -end overlap between two orbitals whereas the pi bond is formed from the sideways overlap between two p orbitals. You could have actually given a much simpler answer and just said pi bonds are weaker than sigma bonds, but obviously I'm doing this for revision purposes, so I wanted to explain the difference in a bit more detail between those two bonds and how they form. And the next part, why does compound A not have EZ isomers? Well, for EZ isomers isn't to be possible, you've obviously got to have a CC double bond, which we've got, but on each carbon of the double bond, you've got to have different atoms or groups of atoms attached. So the left-hand carbon, yeah, we've got different atoms, groups of atoms attached, CH3 and H. But on the right-hand carbon, you've got two identical groups. You've got two CH3 groups. Because of that, we can't have this EZ isomerism. And the next part, we've got to talk about the structural isomer of compound A that does show EZ isomerism, and we've got to draw the Z isomer. So the um, isomer in question is pentatoene, 
Now, obviously, the way this structure's been drawn, I've done it deliberately, uh, is to show that you can't really tell whether this is the E or the Z isomer. So what we need to do is focus on that CC double bond. To make it the Z isomer, I need to put the priority groups on each carbon on the same side of the CC double bond. So on this carbon here, so that one, the CH3 takes priority. So if I put that up the top there, That means the H goes down at the bottom. And then if we move on to the other carbon of the double bond, we've got an H and an ethyl group. Well, the ethyl group's going to take priority, so that needs to be on the same side of the double bond as the CH3. So I need to put C2H5 up there. Or you could go CH2, CH3, and the H down there. So the name of that isomer is Z-pent-2-ene. Moving on to part B, so we've got to come up with the structure of two um, alcohols that could generate compound A by heating with an acid catalyst. Well, when you heat an alcohol with an acid catalyst, you remove the water, you dehydrate it, so you're going to remove an H and an OH atom and create the carbon-carbon double bond. So obviously this isn't the final answer. All I've done is broken that double bond and we're going to put the H and the OH on. So we can go H... OH that way around, or we can go OH, H that way around. So moving on to the final question now, this mechanism. So I've already drawn up compound A and HBr. So we'll get the dipole on the HBr molecules this way around because bromine's more electronegative than hydrogen. So because of that, a pair of electrons from the double bond are attracted to that slightly positive hydrogen. So we show that with that um, curly arrow and that will break the HBr bond by heterolytic fission, and we show that with that curly arrow. Now, the question hasn't specified which product you're going to make, or you have to make, so I'm going to do both. So I'll quickly just go down this left-hand side. So I've put the hydrogen on this carbon here, which means we've got a positive charge on this carbon, and we've got that Br- ion as a result of the heterolytic fission, and then that's pair of electrons on the Br- is attracted to the C with the positive charge, generating this product here. Down the right-hand side, I've put the hydrogen on this carbon, so this one here. So that means the plus charge goes on this carbon, and the same thing happens here, and we get that product. So which is going to be formed in the greater amount? Which is going to be the major product? Well, we've got to focus on the carbocation intermediate, so this stage here. So if we take the left-hand one first, so we're looking at the carbon with the plus charge. This has got one, two, three carbons directly attached, so this is a tertiary carbocation intermediate. Moving on to this one, so the C with the plus on is bonded to one, two carbons directly. So this is a secondary carbocation intermediate. So which one's going to form in the greater amount? Well, it's going to be from whichever of the intermediates is the most stable, and the answer is it's the tertiary one. So you're going to get more of this product forming because it's um, carbocation intermediate is tertiary, which is more stable than this one, which is secondary.